Um, who here has heard about the FBI battle between with over Apple? Okay, I figured this audience would have heard it. <laughs> so the FBI was in possession of a phone, and the FBI is a lazy and competent organization. So they wanted to courts to force Apple to unlock this encrypted phone. Apple told them to go pound sand. And the FBI miraculously was able to do it all by themselves in the end. And this is going to be a little discussion about the security features of mobile devices. Every, everything since iOS 8 automatically encrypts the contents of the device. In Android, I think 6 is now making it automatic again based on hardware. So Android kind of had a weird full device encryption love-hate affair. Because Android or Google doesn't control all the hardware on all the phones released, they weren't able to ensure that every Android device has hardware cryptographic acceleration, like all the iOS devices do. So they released full device encryption a couple versions back, and a lot of people enabled it, and then they flipped out because suddenly the phone's slow, it's unusable, and they turned it off. Now, with, I think, Android 6, they're going to automatically re-enable it again. But if you're running iOS 8 or 9, your contents are already encrypted on it. And how this works is, on all, all smartphones, as far as I'm aware, when you set that password, that password is actually entangled with a hardware identifier that's unique to the phone itself. And that creates a cryptographic key that's used to encrypt all the contents on the device. Android and iOS have certain security um, limitations in there. In iOS, for instance, if I type in the wrong password, and I keep typing the wrong password, it's going to delay me longer each time I type in the incorrect password. First, it's going to be like a few milliseconds. Then it's going to be a, you know, a few more milliseconds. Then it gets up to minutes. Then it gets up to a freaking hour. And if I type in the wrong password 10 times, it just wipes the contents of the device. This means somebody can't just grab my phone and start trying every possible combination. The limitation in the case with the uh, phone of Farouk, the one the FBI was trying to break into, was that it was a 5C, and it didn't have the thumbprint reader on it. All Apple devices with the thumbprint reader, the Touch ID, have a hardware feature called Secure Enclave. And this is actually an ARM processor feature, it's not an Apple-specific feature. And the Secure Enclave is a feature that it handles all the cryptographic operations on a device. The nice part about that is if you compromise the operating system itself, that doesn't compromise the secure enclave code processor. The other nice thing is it a hardware device that contains the key that also enforces the limitations as far as how often you can type how many times you can type in the wrong password, how much delay there is between incorrect passwords. The FBI most likely found a way to disable the software feature by copying the contents of the NAND memory and then popping off the hardware token, the chip with the hardware token in it, and then just trying every combination. And that was easy because who here puts a password on their phone? Okay? Who who here who here has a four digit PIN number or the little design in Android? Okay. The only thing protecting your contents are the software or hardware limitations preventing the number of incorrect passwords from being typed in. Four digit passwords, there's only 10,000 possible passwords. Yep, which for a computer is trivial to try. If you're going, if you want to secure your phone, put in a good password. This is a lot easier now on device that biometrics because I don't have to type in my password every time I want to open my phone. I just have to do it when it first boots up or when I have it open in 48 hours and I just put my thumbprint on here. And I don't, I'm not familiar enough with how Android's thumbprint so, system works, so. Um, I have the Droid Turbo, the okay. first one, and it allows me to kind of set, um, based off the Droid Moto, which is just another kind of back-end program on the device, it allows me to tell it when to ask me for my password. So if I'm connected to my Wi-Fi at home, it doesn't ask. If I'm connected to the USB in my car, it doesn't ask. If it's on me, it doesn't act. How it distinguishes, I don't know. I was going to say, is that how your phone is set up? No. 
Okay, good. Because I was. Gonna... I, I just changed it two seconds before I told you. That's good. Because <laughs> I have a device called the Wi-Fi Pineapple sitting in my bag, mm -hmm. and the nice thing about Wi-Fi devices are really helpful. For instance, they broadcast out the beacon in the name of every single wireless network that they they remember to connect to. Mm -hmm. So I can just have my device pretend to be your network mm -hmm. automatically, and then it'll probably let me in. Then you would have to know my network password because of the network password oh. that I have. Oh, you actually person. said a good okay. Yeah, I, I might have to I might have to beat you for a while to get that on. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh wait, so you're not supposed to change the IP number on your router either? You shouldn't change anything on your router. You should just have it, as Comcast gave it to you, wide open for your neighbors to use. Yeah. <laughs> so that way when you go into the website to log into the router, you can just type in admin and yeah. hit enter. Yeah, and exactly. no password. That way yes. anybody that knows your numbers for your router can just log into exactly. your router and shut it off. Let's see if I'm doing it right. <laughs> I hope I'm scaring you. I hope I'm scaring the hell out of you. Here. I'm kidding. Literally, literally, when I've run out of Wi-Fi a few times, I've checked a couple of my neighbors' routers to see if they secured it properly. When I found out they didn't, I'm like, oh well, You're doing an thank audit. you. I, I was just, I needed the internet for a couple hours before my dad turned back on. Exactly. They were open so, with the passwords. No, nice. I mean they had the default passwords for the manufacturer items. I just oh, that's out. helpful. I like that. You just look like, it up. I just had to look it up online. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing is you get a strong password on your device. The device contents are encrypted. If somebody steals your phone, they can't just dump the contents off and get all your personal information. And that includes law enforcement as far as we know. Uh, barring some kind of weird exploit that is unknown to anybody in the world, there might be a way for them to bypass it. If have even a strong password, but it also might be possible that they're genetically engineering dragons under the Pentagon, so... I can, I can, tell, you, I can tell you the Android device encrypted uh, from the operating system level, Minneapolis police cannot get into. That's a good endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> now, any, Minneapolis PD is a pretty big department, they've got good connections, so... Yeah. The only thing that they could say was, it prompted for the password. That's it. Nice. Now this brings us up to something. We're going to talk about legalese for just a second because the state does exist and we sometimes have to deal with this craziness. Thumbprints are really nice and convenient for logging in, but so far the courts have decided that forcing you to enter your password violates your right against self-incrimination. But putting your thumbprint on a sensor does not. Why those two are totally different? Anybody's guess. The nice thing, at least on the iPhone, I'm guessing Android's probably the same way, is if you reboot the phone, it requires you to type in your password again. Or if it hasn't been unlocked in 48 hours. If you're going to be arrested and you have an iPhone, hold down the home button and the power button for a few seconds and I'll reboot it. And they can take your finger and force it on the touch ID all they want, and it won't unlock anything. So keep that in mind. Until they get the eyes Well, until they just put a gun to your head and say, listen, do you want to live through this arrest or not? Because I can say you had a gun. Called officer safety. Now the other thing about mobile devices is they're great for communicating, but Unfortunately, cell phones and uh, text messaging by default are not secure in any way. Many people have heard of either it's called a Stingray device or an IMS eye catcher. Okay, yep. So what a Stingray device is, is a device that pretends to be a legitimate cell phone tower, and it amps up the power so it's the most powerful cell phone tower in the area, which means your phone will connect to it, thinking, oh, this is, this must be AT&T or Sprint or something like that. That's the best signal I have, so I'll connect to it. So everything goes through that. Whoever's controlling the Stingray device can then read all the unencrypted data going across, which means they can listen to your phone calls and use your, you know, read your text messages. Huh? Without a warrant. Yep. Well, warrants are a pain in the ass sometimes. You just can't go through <laughs> getting them. And it's sometimes, so hard with the 95% request rate. That we just right, right, right. Sometimes you need that right now. You know, because that, that, that guy's dog 
might be a terrorist that's been radicalized. You don't know. So one of the applications I'm going to highly recommend that everybody download is called Signal. It's available for Android and iOS. And it's actually a secure messaging app as well as a secure calling app. Um, I know Nick over there has got a... I'm going to call you here. Answering securely. Disabled. So one of the Thank things... Thank you. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> and why are you calling my number? I have a very particular set of skills, which I've acquired. <laughs> so as you guys can see, it pops up two words here. And the words are randomly generated. And ideally, what's supposed to happen is we pick up, he says the first word, I say the second word. That's how we know that we both have the same cryptographic key and that this is a secure connection. From here, our phone call is encrypted with incredibly strong cryptography. And even if somebody's got a Stingray device and they're listening, they won't be able to understand the word we're saying because they don't have our keys. It's end-to-end -end encrypted. Signal doesn't have our keys either. And our instant messages that are sent are also encrypted. This works over the data network instead of the voice network, but really everything's going data these days, so. Where do you get that out? Uh, if you're running Android, you get it from the Google Play Store. If you're running iOS, you get it from the App Store. What's it called? Signal. signal. Just Signal? Just Signal. I just searched that. I didn't. Signal Booster, Signal Booster, Signal Spy, Signal Strength. Uh, what, do you have Android? Do you have one of those on there? I, huh? Android, signal. right? Yeah, I'm Android. Yeah, search, oh, for, no, search for Red Phone. Yeah. Red Phone? Yeah. Well, I think they changed it not used to be long. called Red. Yeah, this is it because it's a yeah. open whisper system. I actually still have yeah. Red Phone on my it? phone, so it's signal it's just... private messenger. Yeah, yeah. So this is another thing too. Depending on what version of Android you have, if you have a device that's not updated, you have a really old version of Android, it might not be available for your device. Red Phone and Tech Secure were the two apps that existed for Android before they merged them into Signal. And if you have either, either of those, you can communicate with Signal users as well. Yeah. 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 And it's by it, it'll be by created by Open Whisper Systems. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Now another app that is available. It's is, not encrypted if the receiver doesn't have it too, though. To remind people that. Oh. Yeah, and that's something that is now finally they're moving away from the support of unencrypted messaging. Um, beforehand, on the Android version, it replaced your SMS application entirely. So it would warn you, you know, this person doesn't have signals, this is unencrypted. And they're finally moving away from that because that's a bad security model. But iOS never had that problem. Android has got the legacy code in there because you need to support it basically forever because it wants was a feature. Just keep in mind, I think it's that lock icon on Android signal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a lock. Yeah. So just make sure there's a lock icon. If there's not, just send a message saying get signal. And this is something that I run into a lot where I'll be talking about agorist things, which I don't want everybody in law enforcement to hear. And one of these agorists will send me a message on fucking Facebook. Like, oh yeah. Signal. And I'll be like, <laughs> well, my signal's fine. No, it's a fucking app. Get the app. We're taking this to signal. <laughs> Guilty. Guilty. Yeah. yeah, you'll post they'll post stuff on the Liberty Network about, you know, legal stuff and then you're like, what the hell is your problem? <laughs> I, I want to buy some weed. Well that's good. Take it to signal, because nobody sells it on Facebook. That's right. <laughs> not, not um, um, I, 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 I beg to differ. I don't personally, but I have watched numerous people try to do sales on Facebook. <laughs> we know that obviously they're, they're law enforcement agents. That's right, they're wrong. No, yes. they're not. Obviously they are. I have told them to stop repeatedly. <laughs> yep. And they're like, no, but it's on my Snapchat. Oh my gosh. They're, they're like, well that's a little better, but you're broadcasting to everybody that can see your Facebook messages that you're selling drugs. Yes, and this is this is where our, you know, again you're reading my mind because now <laughs> the last part I want to kind of close up on is 
Why do you want this stuff? Because <laughs> right. a lot of people here are like, oh, I have nothing to hide, you know. Um, if the government reads my stuff, I'm just a boring person anyways. They won't get anything out of it. Who here is familiar with every municipal, state, and federal law that exists on the books? Yep. Um, who here has read three felonies a day? I've heard okay. of it. I've heard that we okay. about it. You want to read that book because at the time it was written, the average working professional unknowingly committed three felony level crimes a day, and it's almost certainly up now. There are so many laws on the books that you actually don't know whether or not you're being legal. In fact, I guarantee you're not. You're breaking some law somewhere. So the question I have is why do you want to broadcast that? And the issue isn't whether you're actually committing the felony or not. The issue is whether they think you are. Yep. Okay, so you can be perfectly innocent, but they think you're not. Okay. That's the issue. Just don't, let, don't give them the opportunity. Right. Also, felonies, if witnessed by civilians that decide that they want to take matters into their own hands and they know that it's a felony, uh, citizens' arrests can yes. be performed under felony conditions. Yep. So if you know that something is a felony, you yourself could arrest someone except for cops. Don't try it. I'll shoot you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, know that other people around you who are not cops can also try to restrain you to get the cops called if you have a felony of whatever sort in the situation. Yep. And, so. you know, we're all good libertarians here. I don't think anybody would snitch on anybody else here, but can you guarantee your neighbors aren't good, concerned citizens that want to protect the safety of all the children in the neighborhood? <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the big thing is, because everything is illegal, there's no point in wanting to allowing law enforcement to see anything you're saying or give them any communications whatsoever. The other thing is I've had to actually work with people who are in situations of domestic abuse where they want to, they need to communicate out for help, but they know they're also being monitored. So if you at least have an option like encrypted messaging, and if you use only encrypted messaging, it looks like you're communicating, but they can't read what you're communicating. The important part here is that your day-to-day -day communications are encrypted too, because then it doesn't look like this is an odd message that's encrypted when the rest aren't. Encryption is most effective when every single person is using it, because then it goes from the, obviously this is something the person wants to keep confidential to, this is just normal communications. By using these apps instead of the unencrypted apps, you very well are protecting people's lives that rely on encryption because you are creating more noise that their secure communications are not, are getting lost in. So do it for yourself, not to get arrested, and do it for your fellow person because while you can still say some things in this country and probably not get arrested, there are people living in other countries, say Thailand, where you get kidnapped and thrown in a cage for many years if you say something bad about the royal family. And if all encryption, all communications are encrypted, they can securely, you know, voice their opinion of the royalty. And the Thai government can't really say, well, this one communication was encrypted, you need to turn, you know, tell us what it is, or we're going to beat your ass. So, yeah, that's kind of my, my spiel. I've got 13 minutes left, so questions? Uh, after Snowden, um, a Dutch group and a German group and I think a U.S. group uh, put together some anonymous search engines. One is called Pixquick, the one I use yep. in the Netherlands, because they have privacy rules that are enforced by the European Union, which are much better than ours. And when you're going to searches, all anybody can find out is that Pixquick did a search. Yep. What do you think of those and are there any others? And I'm going to tell you what I think of those. So we're going to type for <laughs> We're going to type signal app. What? I'm just going to search for signal app. As you notice, this doesn't come up in Google. Hmm. It comes up in DuckDuckGo, but it's quick. Um, there's Start Page. There's several other search engines out there. I think. Does it's quick just use Google, like submit it to Google then and then pull it and display it? No, no, they, it's a uh, display results from about 12, I think. Okay. So, once again, Google, you are the product. And if you're trying to avoid surveillance, which 
this is something I forgot to say, but it's very important. A, a prevalent thing amongst libertarians is to rightly agree that government surveillance is bad, but then say, well, private surveillance is okay because you volunteered for it and a private company has the right to do as business as they please. However, one thing you need to keep in mind is that all private surveillance becomes public surveillance with a single court order. So, don't let it be subsidized into the private yep. industry. Yep, don't. Make them spy on us directly. Yep, that way we can always <laughs> catch them. It's called transparency. Yep, and there are, your cell phone provider has what's called a law enforcement gateway that law enforcement agencies can log into and they charge per query and they just say, I want the information on so on, on the cell phone, and it's just given to them. So, do you know to avoid government surveillance, you still need to avoid private surveillance. Now, obviously, I'm not telling you don't use Facebook. I understand you want to see grandma's cat pictures as much as anybody, but in the realm of search engines, you don't need to give your search information to companies that specialize in surveillance. Uh, DuckDuckGo is one I like because like, it's a small, newer startup search engine that's based around privacy. In fact, if I go to their homepage, I think it still says we don't spy on you. Yeah, a search engine that doesn't track you. Now, you can't guarantee these search engines are not containing information on you, but there's still a step better of saying we're not doing it than Google saying, oh, we're doing it, we're making money off of it. Yeah. <laughs> now, Google works a lot hand in hand with one of the, with the Department of State for Democracy. Com. God, I hope this well, is true. So oh, oh start page and Xquick are the same thing now. Start page. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so the nice thing, the same thing I told you with your email, going to Switzerland, getting out of the country, search engines, the same thing. If you can get out of the government, United States government's jurisdiction, you add a much stronger barrier between your personal information and federal law enforcement agencies. Uh, Ixquick's a great one because it's a uh, gentleman over here mentioned, what's your name? Gary. So Gary over here mentioned, it's in the European Union. The European Union's privacy laws are better than the United States privacy laws. And if a federal agency wants to get your searches from them, they have to petition the United States, uh, the European Union government to do it for them. Can you spell it? It's, it's yeah, uh, it's I-X-Q-U-I-C-K dot com. And this is another thing that's probably worth mentioning. Um, I run my own VPN, so I didn't prepare. Uh, but virtual private networks, oh, Icelandic VPN. Virtual private networks, as you can see up here, although I'm connected to what is ultimately AT&T's network, I'm actually connected to a VPN tunnel, which is a secure encrypted tunnel that all my traffic goes through it's going to my servers at my apartment that go then go to Comcast. But I still trust Comcast with my privacy more than AT&T, because as far as I know, AT&T is still the only guys that have a room in their office for the NSA to spy on you. Yes. Now, a better option is to try and encrypt your traffic and get it out of the country. Uh, Iceland is a country right now that they have a booming IT sector, partially because they have ge geothermal energy and running electronic equipment there is cheap. And they also have strong privacy laws. So, if you have a v, if you're VPNing all your tunnel, or if you're tunneling all your traffic encrypted to Iceland, then if the United States government wants to get your information, they have to petition the Icelandic government. Now, you, there's VPNs all around the world. Um, the European Union, you know, works fine. Their privacy laws are much better than the United States. If you can find one in a country that always tells U.S. to go screw itself. Like, I think Nicaragua was so pretty good for Pirate that. Bay based out of right now. Uh, it's a good question because <laughs> they get shut down a lot. They get shut down like they, it's the one website that gets the shut down the most that has to move. That I've noticed. Yeah, I know, and it's just ridiculous because you know they offer all this copyrighted content, and of course it gets shut down, but. Um, Kickass.to is a much better website that offers the exact same content. In fact, much more I content. I didn't know that there was competition in torrenting. Yeah, so there's competition torrenting, and you know, and don't download copyrighted material. That's this is only for backup purposes <laughs> of your own pre-purchased intellectual property. But yeah, so keep in mind. 